In the countryside, the way of life has always been slower than that of towns and cities. Let's find out what living in the country might have been like in the past. A hundred years ago, most people living in a small village like this would have worked on nearby farms. The cottages were small and crowded then, as families used to have lots of children. The next village seemed a long way off. A few people had horses, but most walked everywhere. Country children often had a long walk to school each day. There were no buses or cars then, just muddy cart tracks and paths to trudge along. Older children had to make sure that their younger brothers and sisters kept up with them. There would have been one school for all the children from the surrounding small villages. And after school, most country children had jobs to do. Girls helped at home, and they all worked in the fields. Even the little ones. There were times when whole families worked together in the fields, like harvesting and hop picking. Country life was very much a farming life then. Today, looking after animals hasn't changed much. This lamb needs to be bottle fed, as its mother hadn't enough milk for it. Soon it will be old enough to feed itself. One way to find out what working in the fields was like in the past is to try it out. Picking up stones was a usual job for children. Stones could easily blunt the farmer's cutting tools. But today, they're pulling up weeds to give the turnips a chance to grow. Although this looks like a working farm, it's also a museum. Everything is carried on using traditional farming methods just as it would have been a hundred years ago. Investigating these old farming methods will also give clues to the old way of life in the countryside. There were no tractors or motor-powered machines then, just men and horses. Jack has spent all his life working with horses. How old were you when you first started working with horses, Jack? I was just 14 when I started. How long did you have to work in a day? <clears throat> well, we, when we were feeding horses, we used to have to be up early, about six. Yeah. And then we worked till six o'clock, and then we had our tea, and we used to have to go back and feed them again and groom them and finish them up at night, like, bed them down. Did you have main jobs that you did? Oh, no, not particularly. Well, I, the, I was under Wagoner to start. Well, you had all odd jobs to do then. Yeah. This breed of horse is called a Shire horse. It's big and massively strong for pulling carts, ploughs and other farm machinery. For work, the horse has to wear a leather harness. This part of the harness is called the collar. Everything that the horse pulls will be attached to this collar. Notice that he doesn't have to be tied up while being harnessed. Shire horses are very steady and reliable animals.
When the bit goes in, they're ready for work. Today, it's work with the tip cart. The horse will pull cartloads of manure to the fields. But first, the shafts of the cart must be carefully secured to the horse's harness with chains and leather straps. Manure from the farm animals is then loaded onto the cart. When it's full up, their journey can begin. It's a long, steady trek to the fields, and as in the past, they travel at walking pace with the farmer leading the horse. The horse's harness is made exactly as it would have been a hundred years ago. The cart, too, is an old local tip cart that has been repaired and repainted. Nowadays, tractors would do work like this much more speedily. Here the horse is really showing its strength. Watch how it backs the cart up to the manure heap, guided by the farmer, of course. And now you know why it's called a tip cart. When the manure is spread on the fields, it will help the crops to grow well. Potatoes and turnips will be planted here. And it's back to the farmyard for another load. Remember that a hundred years ago in the countryside, horses and carts were a very common sight. Does this give you clues to other important jobs then? When wheels fell off carts, someone had to repair them or make new ones. The person who did this job was called a wheelwright. Today, the wheelwright is mending the spokes of this old cartwheel. It's made entirely of wood. He has to take off the rim before he can repair the spokes. Wheelwrights must have always had plenty of work with all those carts about. The farrier, or blacksmith, would have been a very important man in the village too. 
As well as being the horse vet, the farrier would make new shoes for horses at his smithy. Watch how quickly he works, hammering the red-hot iron into shape. For the next stage, the iron must be heated up again. He pumps the bellows to increase the flames. Pieces of ash and iron are brushed off before more hammering. Now it's beginning to look like a horseshoe. Making the holes for the nails will finish it off. Horseshoes wore out quickly on the old cobbled roads. This meant regular visits to the farrier. Horses' hooves are hard, so the hammering doesn't harm them. The farrier's smithy was a bit like today's garage, only in those days people brought their horses for shoeing and not motor cars to be repaired. In the past, farriers and wheelwrights were very important to country people, but there was yet another job to do with horses and carts. Can you think what it was? The harness may give you a clue. It's the saddler. Working with leather, the saddler would have made harnesses for the horses and straps for the carts. Do you have to be very strong to punch the hole through? No, no, it goes through quite easily. You will see in a moment when you have a go, won't you? <laughs> now, would you like to have a go at stitching? Yes, please. Are you any good at threading needles? Yes. yes. We shall see. <laughs> Go on, you go. Now, these are the clams. You can't stitch leather without them, you see. They go between the clams were the name for this wooden tool, which held the leather tight for stitching, like a pair of pincers. Left needle first. And now the right one. Don't, don't take it all the way through, just a little bit. And pull. Well done. One of the important differences about country life a hundred years ago was that most people didn't travel far and had jobs working on the farms around their villages. Nowadays, mainly because of the invention of the motor car, many people living in the countryside drive to work in the big towns. In the past, horses ploughing in the fields like this would have been a very familiar sight. Things have always changed slowly in the countryside, but a hundred years on, tractors and combine harvesters have finally replaced the working horse and speeded up the whole process of farming. <laughs> soft